that incredible wall of, you know, completely mad, rusticated, random bugnato stonework. And then these lions with grand ducal crowns are rather good. And then the, the, the garden facade. And this, I think, this is the death mask of, of Lorenzo the Magnificent. But this is all in the Museo degli Argenti, so the silver museum, which kind of has all the precious objects collected by the Medici. And if you haven't been there, go. Full of these extraordinary, extraordinary objects, ancient Roman objects mounted in, you know, 15th, 16th century. Quite a lot of them have Medici or Med, do you see this one, um, engraved on it. Like, you know, yeah, this is mine. I'm going to make sure everyone knows it's mine by putting my name on it. And then here, the top of this jobby, do you see, has got a ball with Medici balls on it and then a diamond ring. So it's all very, very personalised. And these stones are unbelievable. I think they're so beautiful. If you don't enjoy this sort of thing, I would, I would, you know, check out right now because there's a lot of it, I can tell you. This one's got that same Medici ball up the top with a diamond ring and a sort of grand ducal coronet around it as well. Look at that stone. And this obviously belonged to Lorenzo the Magnificent. It's got, you know, his, his name on it there, you see. And this one, I think, too. And this, what does this say? This also says Lorenzo. Really fantastic. I think that's sardonyx. And, and, and so that is probably an imperial Roman cup, you know, actually drunk from by somebody in imperial Rome. Beautiful, beautiful rooms. It's all in, um, in Palazzo Pitti. And I'm afraid I got no photographs of them, really, because they were full of people and, you know, and the objects are more interesting to me. But this is one picture of a room, frescoed room. And then up the top, there's a little sort of gallery thing. And I think there's a window up there. And then there's this painted balustrade on the right and then a real one on the left. They've done a bit, put a bit of cut out sort of wooden board with the vase of flowers painted on it. Do you see continuing? I mean, it's such a brilliant, mad piece of trompe l'oeil. I love that. Quite a lot of religious objects, obviously. Um, so here's a sort of a deposition or something. Um, but in this beautiful box. And then this is a series of ancient Roman heads. Um, and these were in the tribune of the Uffizi, which is the great sort of octagonal central room of the Uffizi, the famous one, and, and where all the great treasures were. And so these were in there. And so it's, a, it's, it's an ancient Roman rock crystal carved head. And, and then the body has been done up in the Grand Ducal workshops in sort of 1590 or something. And then here's somebody else. And again, I think, you know, the head is old and maybe part of the body is old and then part of it has been added. And here again, a rock crystal head. And this one's had gold spikes sort of put into it as a kind of halo. And then here's a full figure. Don't know who, but some mythological personage. This was the famous court dwarf made by Giambologna. Isn't it beautiful? And obviously he's riding on a real Nautilus shell that's been fitted onto this completely bonkers looking sort of slithering dragon, snail, serpent, weird animal. And I suppose it's a very lifelike portrait of the famous court dwarf. I think it's called Morgante or something. This is one of the Grand Dukes, I suppose. Again, made by the Grand Ducal workshops. <laughs> Look at him with his wig. And I suppose he's in about 1705 or something. And he's got his wig and he's entirely made out of hard stones, you know, and they had this, the Opificio delle Pietre Dure, that, the, you know, was this factory producing hard stone stuff. But isn't that Grand Duke marvellous? And he's sitting on a whole lot of sort of cannons and spoils of war. And, and maybe he was a terrific military leader, I don't know. It seems unlikely. He, he doesn't look like a military type, does he? He looks more like a party guy. And then here are just three babies in a pile, you know, because why not? But I suppose really they're angels. They have got some wings, haven't they? And then this is the, the great treasure of Coburg in Germany and that, that terrible 30 years war, which, which you know, saw um, Elizabeth and Frederick of the Palatine ousted from Prague um, and unable to go back to Heidelberg. And, and Coburg, again, I suppose, was probably on the same side as them, you know. And so it was invaded by the imperial armies and, you know, one of the Medici 
um, was, was serving with the Imperial Army and so took these as booty from the palace in Coburg. And the, these are turned ivory um, sort of table centerpieces. And these were a tremendous, tremendous um, feature of the time. You know, really, I suppose these were made sort of 1590, 1600, and the, and the siege was in 1630. But the technical feat of making these things, just absolutely mind-boggling. And of course, they had these sort of, you know, turning lathes that were quite new. And, and so I think they made it possible but still, I mean, they are extraordinary, extraordinary things. And look at that. And then the one on the left, you see, it's got a flower coming out of it. And then it's got a, a snake. The spiralling thing is actually a snake that's sticking its face out from the foliage. Oh, here is a, a horse in a cage. Again, ivory. And then here an amazing cabinet, I suppose, made in Holland. And here a reliquary. I mean, it's just, it's absolutely just crammed full of this treasure. It's extraordinary. And here's, here's a, a, a relic of somebody. I think this is St. John Nepomuk, who's terribly important somewhere, isn't he, in Vienna or something. And there's a couple of saints' bones and another reliquary. I know people hate hate relics and bones, so it's fun to show them. Um, and this, what about that? <laughs> Imagine making that. It's so mad. <laughs> and it's obviously, you know, baby Jesus um, in his manger, you know, but the straw is, is, of course, gold, obviously, and he's carved out of one hard stone, and then his sort of blanket thing is carved out of another, and then the whole, all the straw is sitting on a rock crystal sort of bowl. I mean, it's literally the craziest thing of all time. Although this is also fairly mad, is a particularly gay St. Sebastian, tied to a, a piece of real coral, and then with these ivory angels hovering around in the branches of the coral. And upstairs, there's this unbelievable sequence of rooms with these miniature, miniature, tiny, tiny objects. And they're so beautiful. And they've all got these carved and gilded wooden brackets they're sitting on, which all have different designs. Endless cups and vases, miniature things, all out of hard stones, all, I suppose, made at the Grand Ducal workshops. I mean, incredible things, I think. I could look at these for hours. I'm afraid. I mean, we'd better race through them, hadn't we? But there are just, I mean, so many, and they are just so wonderful. Look at that stone, isn't that fantastic? Marvellous. And what about that lion? I suppose that's carved out of coral and then fitted with gold, and it's got scent bottles inside. But the, th the object is absolutely tiny, you know, the scent bottles are miniature, everything's miniature. And then here, obviously, a, a, a monkey on a chain made out of two baroque pearls, you know, a knight, he and his horse are both made from Baroque pearls. And then here's a couple of nice flower arrangements, because why not, do you know? I think he's probably St. George has killed the dragon and he's standing on the dragon. But the whole, the whole thing is pearls, is these mad Baroque pearls. <laughs> and it's just so, so nutty, the whole thing. And an awful lot of this was collected by the last... Um, the, the last of the Medici, who was a woman called like Anna Maria or something, Anna Maria, and she was the daughter of Cosimo III, and she was married to the Elector Palatine, um, like Frederick and Elizabeth, um, but they no longer lived in Heidelberg, they lived in Dusseldorf. But she collected a lot of this stuff, and then I think when she died, she sent it back to Florence, or maybe when maybe she was widowed and she went back to Florence. But these are just incredible, these things. Look at this. This person's carved out of ivory and is about this size in reality, or maybe a bit smaller, probably even. But look at the little pilgrim flask and these putting on a sort of gold robe or something. I mean, it's so beautifully made, everything. And here's another pilgrim. I mean, they are so beautiful, these things, and so mad. What about this guy? Look at him. <laughs> so, so mad. That must be German, mustn't it? It's a completely German sort of, you know, the German sense of humour. Um, and this old drunk, look, he's sitting there, he's got his wine sack, and uh, look at his, his, his belly and his left thigh 
a completely, you know, a, a, a one great big baroque pearl. And here's another scent set. And, and the scent bottles are carried in panniers on the side of the horse. And the horse has got a sort of nose bag on, is being led by somebody. And then there's a monkey sitting on top of the horse. Then here's a Renaissance table, which is a rather fantastic table. It's just sort of sitting up there. And you can see the room's rather nice to decorate as well. And then <laughs> it does get weirder. It does get weirder. Here, here we get into a whole thing of shell people. Aren't they fantastic? And they're sort of like 1680 or something, these. And just the faces are so good. So mad. Look at that guy uh, and his beard. I mean, they are, I, I think they're so beautiful, these. So the attitude on the face is so good, isn't it? And now here we go a, a bit more kitsch. We've got to throw in some hard stones and seed pearls and then carve a rather weird face. So it's kind of coquillage, but not. I mean, here the face is made out of coral, is carved out of coral. And what about the flowers coming up the top of his head? I mean, it, they're so, so odd. And here, we're not really sure what was going on here. But he's clearly not having a good day at all, is he? This one seems to be more enthusiastic, at least. Anyway, there's enough of them. Oh, well, here's, here's an old case of other ones. Maybe this is later on, and they thought they'd be very subtle. Just have one ball. But it's a rather beautiful ceiling. And that is in there. And this is a wonderful piece of furniture. Look at it. And it's, it's, it's got, got bits of coral on the top, do you see? And these gilded dragons. And, then, and so the whole thing, it obviously originally was made for coral objects and sea objects and things. Um, but they've now filled it up with amber instead. And you go and there's literally, there's a room for amber and a room for carnelian and a room for sardonyx. It's wonderful. And here's a similarly bonkers cabinet and, and and that's got amber and ivory in it and he has just a chair with some wonderful silver lace an amber table fountain and very popular in germany you know made in germany around 1600 or something and so you, you'd fill it with wine and somehow i don't know how did it have some sort of pump i don't know how it how it spurted spurted wine out and then here a column in a hard stone and Lap. And this looks like Miserone, doesn't it? But I don't know if it is. But just, you know, there are just rooms and rooms and rooms of this. Look at this mad thing. I think, is this the Hydra? Is this, is, is that Hercules taming the Hydra or something? I don't know. And then here's some engraved rock crystal. And then this fantastic thing, which I think is that Diane de Poitier. Didn't you see D, D and H for Diane and Henri and her crescent moon? And then here strange lapis vessel with chains anyway that's enough of that there, now we've just got a few pictures of palazzo pitti you know the rooms um and a very few because we're running out of time and, and because i didn't take many i didn't have time i ran round, but there's a stool in the dining room and here this is a, a painting by mm, peruzzi maybe somebody like that and and then a, a table so the painting done in kind of, you know, I suppose, 1510, and, and, and then the table down in sort of 1750 or something in Scagliola, but copying the, copying the painting and placed underneath. It's such a funny idea. And, and the paintings, quite a lot of the masterpieces are on hinges, and so, so, so you can turn them a bit towards the light to get better light on the painting. So you can just see the hinges there on the right. And so in each room... There's a masterpiece on hinges, which is so good. I think I love the idea of having your paintings on hinges. And then that's just a nice piece of um, card, gilt, wood. Another fireplace, and, and on the right, you can see that's the painted um, chimney board, you know, fitted in. And then this is a bathroom prepared for Napoleon. And isn't it splendid? A really beautiful bathroom. And then this is the stufa. What does that even mean? Is that like a steam bath, a stufa, um, or a warm room? I don't know. <sighs> so ignorant. Um, but it's got a fantastic 1590 or something floor. Part of the wall is painted there and then part of it done much later. But in there is this vase of Napoleon, of course, a bit of serve on a rather beautiful column, sitting there waiting for the conqueror to arrive and take up residence.